Hello, everyone. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Welcome to the New Moon webinar, Sagittarius New Moon webinar of the 2025 initiative. We continue our work with the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals and in the cycle of Sagittarius, we bring our collective focus to goal 10, reduced inequalities between and within the countries. Over to you, Rebecca. Thanks, Alexander. So um, just to remind us of our purpose, um, we would like to um, read in um, a formulation of our vision that we've prepared. And if you will have heard it before, if you were here last month. Um, so I invite our collective co focus to come to this purpose as we um, listen to these words together. We gather once a month at the new moon to focus on a shared vision for the common good that is expressed through the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. We participate in group meditation on these formulated thought forms of solution that address the issues facing humanity and the planet at this time. These SDG thought forms help create physical conditions leading to transformation and elevation of human consciousness. Through this meditation, we energize and magnetize the vision to be radiatory and to reach as many minds as possible in order that the sustainable development goals might manifest through many actions. We use the opportunity of the new moon cycles and the available astrological energies to distribute, radiate and anchor intention on the physical plane. As we sound the note of this shared vision through our discussion and meditation work, we support the vibrant activation, consolidation and spread of the will to good throughout humanity. So, I just want to remind everyone that we're working with a, a new experimental structure and um, starting off with a naming circle. Some of you may not have experienced this last month. Um, Dot will invite everyone to speak into the space just to say your name. Um, and we warmly invite you to do that. If there are any technical problems, Dot will say your name. Um, for you and please um, be sure to let us know, <coughs> excuse me, if you if you do have trouble unmuting yourself so we can um, support you to, to um, fix those problems before next time so we can hear your voice next time. Um, after the, the naming, um, we'll go into a little stimulus where um, um, Martha and Katya today will present some ideas about the goal and some of you may have been um, remembering the goal daily throughout the last month and hopefully this will provide a magnetic centre to draw together all our, our thoughts and impressions around this goal. Um, and then Darcy will lead us in meditation and please um, um, think of the meditation as a portal into the discussion and the final phase of bringing through the impressions and ideas about this goal within this new moon time. 
um, as we um, complete the work of the webinar today. So over to Dot. Thank you, Rebecca. So yes, let us come together and unite our hearts across distance as we sound our names into the group field. And you'll see on the computer screen a picture of the world map. So we will sound our name and where we are calling in from. If you click on the attendee, attendees box at the top of the GoToWebinar control panel, you'll see the list of names alphabetically. And we will begin with that in just a moment. And then following that list, will the staff please go in order as well. As Rebecca said, if you are unable for some reason to put your name in uh, and or unable to raise your hand on the screen, which is what we will use to tell if you wish to speak, then I will sound your name into the space. So Alexander, will you just take a moment for the sake of clarity, as this is the second time we're doing this, and so we get the rhythm down, about the hand raise and how that will work. Uh, yes. Most likely, you know uh, how to operate the control panel already. Just quickly, I'm showing on the screen how the control panel looks like. and. Um, uh, you see there is uh, a function of the uh, raise your hand. It's this uh, little um, button. So when you want to speak, just raise your hand and we will unmute you. Uh, also here you can put your questions during the webinar in the uh, section question section of the control panel. So if you have any thoughts, please either speak or write them down. So we'd invite you now, at all attendees, to please raise your hand. And Alexander will unmute you. And just please remember, you may need to unmute yourself. Make sure the microphone is green. So let us begin, Alexander, if you'll unmute the first one. Um, Alain Gauthier. Aidan Mattison. Betty Rowe. Cheryl Binzen. Christine Thomas. Kaya Bannon from Dunedin, New Zealand. Ella from Denmark. Jill from the UK. Karen Jill Britska. from the UK. Karen Britska. Robin in Kansas City. Richard from Queensland, Australia. Dot Maver, United States. Martha Gallagher, United States. Rebecca Hood. Sorry, Darcy, go. Darcy Sessions, United States. And Rebecca Hood, Queensland, Australia. Katako from New York. And Daniela from Brussels. Alexander Ilchuk. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Alexander Ilchuk, New York City. Thank you. And, 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 and,
Is there someone else who needs to say their name? Robin Gross. Thank you, Robin. Thank you, Dot. And, and I su suggest um, um, everyone mute themselves and be in control of own microphone during the webinar. Great. Thank you, Alexander. And, and Martha is going to lead us in an alignment now as we bring ourselves together now that we've heard everyone's voices. So over to you, Martha, and please unmute yourself. Thank you, Rebecca. I needed to be reminded to unmute myself. Good day, everyone. It is good to hear the sounds of your voices speaking your names. Let us together now as one begin a steady rhythmic breathing to stimulate our etheric vehicles. In this regular breathing, we create the space where the soul invokes and receives a vocation. Let us visualize ourselves about to take a journey together. As we know, the new group of world servers are in fact one organism and we together may be like a small microchip of that one organism, bringing out our own spiritual initiative into this present space. Now, having become one, we are ready to travel to the right here, right now, present. We may see ourselves in the office of the great triangle of the hierarchy where Master Rokotsi presides. There are other beings present. We know these beings, sometimes from direct experience, sometimes from manifestation of historical events. We take in their warm welcome at the table. In a harmony of silence, we upload our information and experiences that have led to the miracle of governmental cooperation we call the 2030 Sustainable Development Agenda. We sense their pleasure in our report. Alongside that, our ability to observe all that is transpiring clears. It seems we are looking down at the world now and from this space, we realize how very small human history seems in the course of all creation. And yet, we see ourselves as key in moving into the future. We are strengthened in the presence of these beings and determined to take our place alongside them into responsibility for humanity's future. Breathing beauty, breathing peace. Having received our information, the masters invite us to receive their download. They seem eager to share their information, their own cumulative experience with the planet, sometimes through us. They insist they can do more if we will let them. They remind us their greatest handicap is that too many of we world servers 
are meditating without the necessary tension. They beg us to go back with this new resolve toward establishing attention to stimulate, among others, the needed tension for the occult work of transformation. They see this happening when groups meditate together. They are pleased that we have already learned how to operate as one organism, for that is key to the strengthening of intention. We remember the words given by DK and DNA1, tension, when focused rightly, is the great releasing power. We take a moment to release all effort. Rather, we locate this tension in the triangle of the throat, the ajna, the crown. We thank this great holarchy of unseen beings clearly eager to help us. Now, we find ourselves turning toward the field of service on earth, refreshed. We find laughter within. We ease our way back into the plane of our etheric field. We recall wisdom is a special kind of joy and thus in gratitude we begin inside the breathing, the rhythm, the dance of our every day, our group meditation. Over to you, Katya. And um, at this particular time, our meditation is happening within the energies of an amazing sign of Sagittarius. Sign deeply connected to our human evolution. The sign of the most interesting triplicity. The archer, I'm sorry, the center. Which is forever a symbol of humanity in the ancient mythologies for man is an animal and at the same time is a god and therefore is a human being. Then the archer and then the bow and the arrow. We are most, um, I would say, lucky. It was a really amazing moment in time because Jupiter, the ruler, and the heart of the Sagittarian energy, is actually has actually moved into Sagittarius, you know, and um, therefore the potency of that energy is really great at the moment. So we are for the next year until December second, two thousand nineteen. We have this opportunity to connect with this energy and support with it, invoke it into the support of our goals and direction and um, supporting all the people who are working with the achieving of those goals, the achievement of those goals altogether. So I would say that this year is going to be very potent and will support our work.
when it comes to equality, I believe, we always will have to deal with a duality. And the line, Gemini, Sagittarius, actually is unique opportunity to solve that. Because in Gemini, the duality is sensed and resolved. And in Sagittarius, it's resolved into one pointed directed goal. In both signs, Earth, our planet, plays a part of a ruler. And in Sagittarius, it's a, it's a, it, it is an esoteric ruler. So therefore, all the energies that are coming are anchored on our planet by default. So we can count on it. And within those energies, we can work. It's an interesting sign because it has um, a five keynotes and um, they in many ways describe the whole uh, five aspects of the sign. So first keynote, it's um, attached or fused duality, the center. Unattached duality, the archer, freedom or one-pointedness the bow and arrow. Second keynote, human ambition leading eventually to spiritual aspiration. And I think that keynote is very much related to the goal that we're working on today. Because um, working with the matter for millennia is governed by human ambition. And now, since the mind of humanity is developing more and more, I think we're shifting into actual practical potential to shift, to go into spiritual aspiration in that regard. And um, if the G's are basically the proof of that. Third keynote, a clear shaft of light which is the intuitive and focused attitude of the pledged disciple. That part of the Sagittarian energy is very much related to the meditation that we just had because that's how hierarchical ideas get precipitated by the new group and implemented. The returning arrow of intuition, that's number four, as it is sometimes called, for it is the shaft of the arrow of aspiration which returns to the sender as the arrow of the intuition. The aspiration turns into intuition and deeper understanding of what needs to be done and what direction needs to be taken for our goals to be precipitated and becoming the way of living, the way of thinking, the way of planning. Sagittarius is one of the intuitive signs and for only the intuition will suffice to carry a man to the foot of the mountain of initiation in Capricorn. And five, idealism, which is the power to see the vision and to direct one's course towards it. This is the work of Mars, the expression of the sixth ray. So we have a played really full. We have a lot of potential aspects for the meditation and the last goal. And having Jupiter, this enormous blue light, carrying through to us 
the energies of the second ray of love wisdom, the acting power of for the will that comes to our planet will allow us to work in full. This December we also will have um, a, an interesting event. We have Mercury conjunct Jupiter on December 21st. So it's also a good moment to potentiate um, the direction and support for the goals that we're working on. It's an important moment of those two, second and fourth ray planets joining together and giving another impulse basically on the day of summer, uh, I'm sorry, winter solstice. It's again, it's a great planning point for the year. Well, um, that's about it. No, thank you. And um, over to you, Martha. Thank you, Katya. Indeed, our plates are full. And uh, I think it's a, extremely important to uh, recognize the, the particular power of the signs, the gifts of intuition and expansion, <clears throat> and the level of activity that harmonizes. So we might pick up on what Katya laid out by recalling the phrase that all of us say frequently, <clears throat> let the plan of love and light work out and may it seal the door where evil dwells. Pondering this phrase in light of SDG 10 to affirm equality manifested especially in the political, social, and economic spheres. From the perspective of the intuitive plane, the entire 2030 sustainable development agenda may be seen as the 21st century planetary representation of both sealing the door and working out the plan of love and light. It is in itself achievement that points out what humans as a group have accomplished and what is still missing. The 10th goal seeks to close the gap we call inequality in more specific ways than ever before laid out. It is inextricably linked to the first goal, to eradicate poverty, and the 17th, to promote partnerships, among other goals, of course. The 10th goal, as all of them, leaned toward national interests because they were drafted by 193 state parties whose first interest is to promote their sovereignty. Civil society, however, through the lobbying groups at the UN, who in organized ways have influenced the writing of the agenda, have intruded persistently a human and earth rights perspective. Thus, under pressure, they were built into the entire agenda. Tension between the rights of governments and civil society continues at the UN and throughout the world. Yet through this tension, the hopes of reducing corruption, raising the bar on governmental accountability to its people, and intercooperation on every level seems to be increasing. The goals represent the opportunity to realize what the bottom line for humanity's social evolution calls for. Joao Kuhl and Alice Bailey continually distinguish between the plane of social evolution and consciousness expansion. World servers are dedicated to both and now have the ability to integrate them. We work here with one of the, in these world server uh, sessions, we work with one of the 17 goals at a time because each is so complex. Cumulatively, 
within the goals, there are 169 targets spread out among the goals. Those targets represent more specific items within the goal. Alongside this, in 2016, countries and civil society settled upon 222 norms or measurements called indicators. These indicators are the yardstick by which the annual high-level political forum assesses progress. It is a value to look into them, these indicators, because they help us to see the underlying values driving the agenda forward. The indicators reveal to us the level of consciousness at play for effective impact. Let us look at the indicators for goal 10. Take a minute to look over them. I believe that uh, Alex can post those indicators. Thank you so much, Alex. We don't need to read them, just skim them and see what stands out for you to indicate well, what are the values underlying a very, very complex apparatus around achieving uh, implementation. So that um, what came to my mind in relation to these indicators were three major points. One is empowerment through balance, shattering the glass ceiling for the bottom 40% of persons. The second, inclusion, social, political, economic inclusion, dignity. And the third is responsibility through the regulation and monitoring of finance, greater transparency and accountability. The indicators, of course, because they're mechanistic and uh, are derived from the existing circumstances that we live in, nevertheless, are clues toward where the arrow can be projected into this better world that we're creating. This may be a time in our discussion where your insights and your associations with what you see in your world and the local level uh, are at play here. They're legal, economic in instruments, mayors are making decisions that uh, are very much connected to this goal. We are forging a common framework for shared goals. We're bringing together a wider spectrum of human understanding and knowledge unfolds as information becomes shared. Finally, we notice greater coherence between subjectivity of, of value, I would say, the subjectivity of greater inclusion for all groups of people and the objectivity or the mechanisms necessary for uh, measurable outcomes. Today, we all know the disparity seems to be increasing. It is also true, however, that information flows have taken quantum leaps and we simply know more. It is also true that finally, we're beginning to measure wealth in terms of the earth, in terms of the potential of human beings. We see more clearly today the door that needs to be sealed. Such exposure allows for legal systems to improve, for greater clarity and sense of justice that comes from our great wounding because of materialism. Briefly, we remind ourselves that the process of their implementation becomes the path of recognition, that humans can and do work together on a planetary scale already. It is the consciousness about that that may be missing. 
Our job is to make the good news known. We must dis persist despite the current backlash of indifference, ignorance or resistance, which continues to dominate our communication networks. We see though, how divisiveness is very much in proportion to consciousness manifesting. So I wanted to show you a final slide on a resource that's available to all of us. Thank you, Alex. About the gathering of good practices taken on by the UN Department of uh, Development, now called the UN Department of Sustainable Development, <clears throat> that um, we are all invited into. You can take the information on that slide, and if you know of something going on in your neighborhood, you can um, share it with this group. And uh, in that way, the sustainable development uh, goals are becoming more measured. Good practices will be increased. At work in the UN, some of us who work on smaller groups to influence um, the uh, continuation of the outcomes, we, we gather together to work on such projects as universal protection of social floors, the responsibility to protect in times of crises, the prevention of genocide, all of which marginalize people, some work on the opening access to information flows, and many other global needs. We praise the, the UK especially for the work that it's done on developing mechanisms uh, by funding research organizations that are showing uh, how banks can be approached for more green loans. We are, have the opportunity also to notice the practice of heroic individuals possessed by ingenuity. I'm thinking of a Tanzanian entrepreneur who's building cell phones from the enormous amounts of trash that are now being deposited in his country. When goals are set, the news tightens around these more egregious forms of corruption and individual aggrandizement, especially of those country leaders who are holding the system back. It is time for us to recognize the universal entitlement to the right of human dignity and for us to express the right to human divinity, which is growing. Thank you. Over to you, Darcy. Hello, everybody. Before we begin our meditation, do we have a slide presented? Sasha, thank you. Could we have the slide um, for the actual meditation that I have? The first slide, Sasha. Um, Darcy, um, We'll please give me another uh, second. I will get it. Thank you. Well, this you know, work is being done. I just want to remind one of the keynotes of Sagittarius that a dimension, I think it is essential as well. I see the goal, I reach that goal, and then I see another. So if we put that into a whole meditation as well. Over, thank you. Thank you, Rebecca. Um, Katie, Katya, sorry. The um, I often think of the um, uh, archer in this kind of um, 
meditation and appreciated the notion of the flow back. The archer projects outwards, and in the extension of that, there is a return toward uh, greater expansion, the other mountain. Thank you. Before we begin our meditation, I would like to say with gratitude that our visualization outline has been adopted for the 2025 initiative webinar and applied to the UN SDG 10 with permission from the World Goodwill Cycle of Conferences visualization. The original visualization will next be used is currently being used to support the upcoming UN Intergovernmental Conference on the Global Compact for Migration to take place and is taking place tomorrow and Monday, uh, 10th through 11th in Marrakesh, Morocco. Anyone who is not familiar or who would like to participate with the Cycles of Conferences initiative can sign up to receive notifications of upcoming conferences when the visualization will be used at www.worldgoodwill.org slash cycle. Now we'll move into our visualization. The next slide, Sasha. Thank you. Our visualization is on the 2030 Sustainable Development Agenda with grounded focus on Goal 10, affirming equality within and among countries. Forget not that divine energy must make its impact upon human minds. These minds are the available instrument in their aggregated effect, through which the will of God can express itself. They are necessarily responsive to the stimulating and energizing results of that impact. And this will evoke results suited to the type of mind affected. Response will be compatible with the quality and the intention of those minds. Where goodwill is present and there is unselfish intention, a broad point of view, those qualities will be strengthened and endowed with potency. Link up with the souls of all fellow servers who are meditating on the 17 goals of the 2030 Sustainable Development Agenda. Visualize a tide of lighted energy pouring down from the center where the will of God is known and pouring into the center humanity. Imagine the whole group sounding the affirmation of the will together. In the center of the will of God I stand, not shall deflect my will from his. I implement that will by law. I turn towards the field of service. I, the triangle divine, work out that will within the square and serve my fellow men.
through the mind's eye, project a lighted seed of will energy into the heart of the thought form under construction on equality in connection with the targeted goals of SDG 10 within and among countries. See myriad streams of living will energy connected to it by co-workers around the world. Reflect for a few minutes on the seed thought. A recognition of the unity of all life and an economic, social, and political inclusion based on equality and principled sharing are essential for the realization of the sustainable Developmental Goals, number 10. See the essence of any ideas and reflections adding to the potency of the group thought form.
visualize the pulsating nucleus of light at the heart of the thought form being fanned into a flame by the group gaze and see its radiation touching the consciousness of all the people, planet, and partnerships of the Sustainable Development Goals. Quietly, we will sound together the adapted version of the great invocation, imaginatively hearing it being chanted by the worldwide group. As we do so, visualize the outpouring of light and love and power through the five planetary inlets, London, Darjeeling, New York, Tokyo, Geneva, empowering all who are promoting universal equality, prosperity, and peace, and awakening humanity since of shared responsibility for the one life of our planet. From the point of light within the mind of God, let light stream forth into human mind. Let light descend on earth. From the point of love within the heart of God, let love stream forth into human hearts. May the coming one return to earth. From the center where the will of God is known, let purpose guide all little human wills. The purpose which the masters know and serve. From the center which we call the human race, let the plan love and light work out and may it seal the door where evil dwells let light 
and love and power restore the plan on earth. Thank you. And thank you, Darcy and Katya and Martha for that beautiful and potent focalization of our work today. As we come back to the present and our bodies, I shouldn't say the present, I should say our, our bodies and our speaking apparatuses, <laughs> um, <clears throat> we warmly invite sharing. We've heard all your voices today. Um, so please feel very, very welcome to speak into the circle and the impressions and thoughts that you may have. Um, um, At the moment, most of the people are muted on their end, so whenever anyone is wants to share something just please unmute yourself there are a couple of people who are muted by the organizers so if you would like to speak raise your hand and we will unmute you as well thanks alexander <laughs> all the technical things we have to remember um ooh. i noticed um that Avon um, was online and um, able to speak at the beginning and I'd just like to invite you, Avon, if you have um, sharing that you would like to do, please, um, perhaps you might like to speak now. Um, Don't forget yeah. to unmute yourself, even if you're ready to speak. Yeah, and and of course, if you're not ready to speak, um, please come when you're ready. But yes, we'd love to hear from you. Thank you. potent focus and profoundly. A radiant meditation and presentation by everyone. It's important to remember that nations are made up of peoples, and so the role of the nuclear growth servers and of civil society in general, which Martha describes so beautifully, is even more significant. And 
what is also important is that, as was called for during this um, this wonderful webinar, is our bringing this into governance and into what is occurring on the local basis in our own political arena is very important for the implementation of the sustainable development goals in general and also of A10. So any action that we can take that helps to illuminate the decision makers about the existence of the SDGs and that local and global um, attainment of these goals is very important and significant to the development of a coherent and sustainable society and involved citizenry is incumbent upon us ever more than ever. And particularly, I will say, in um, countries, including the United States, where there is a tide that is going toward a lack of cooperation and a lack of local implementation um, of any policies that might help to do with inequality. So I'm not being very coherent because I'm still involved at the moment in the beautiful meditation. But to say that also Sustainable Development Goal 10, related as you spoke of before earlier, is related to other sustainable development goals and that all of them are in a context. One perspective might be that they are all relating to building a culture of peace among all these diverse sustainable development goals, which are actually completely interrelated. Thank you. Mm, thank you so much. Amain, if you could please unmute yourself. Thank you. Yes, this, uh, I would like to um, actually uh, emphasize what Evan was just saying about the importance of uh, the local level, particularly the cities, uh, where there is a a greater interdependence that is felt among all sectors, uh, business, government, education, healthcare, etc. And that the capability of local uh, um, I don't want to say elites because it, it involves everyone, but the people who are let's say we will most power, more power in these cities to be willing to collaborate more uh, directly and more intensely than they have now. Uh, I live in a city, Portland, Oregon, where uh, there is a lot, a lot has been done to modernize the city. However, it's the, at the expense of uh, uh, inequity, so it's not an inclusive city as it could be. And I feel that what has been said today is so important to keep on, the, mm -hmm. to both be aware of the need for a shared vision that is not always there, and at the same time to be willing to deal with the, the root causes of inequality that has not been necessarily addressed. Uh, there are many, many things being done to alleviate the consequences, for instance, of homelessness, but not enough in addressing the root causes. And that can only be done if there is a sense of what is possible that has not been reached for at this time. So I will leave it at that. Thank you very much. Thank you, Elaine. 
<clears throat> there's a I, I feel a theme here from um, Martha's slide of the um, ability for people around the world to um, submit initiatives that are working well in their areas, this theme of um, community input and then what Avon was saying about, you know, um, bringing the, the goals to the attention of the local administrators and authorities. So um, we can do what, what we can in our own areas and cities um, to to um, enliven the important um, foundational aspects of these things. It's Martha here. May I say a word or two? Of course. <laughs> Uh, Elaine, first of all, Avon, it's so good to hear your voice. So good. Thank you for joining. Um, Elaine, I think you lifted out something else that is really important for us to talk, uh, look at, which is the, the root causes of things. And that, um, in your gentle way, they are not as clearly expressed in the goals as we might like to see them. However, the reality of the uh, disparities are, are the basis from which the wording, the language actually evolved. And I think as new group of world servers, we have to be strong enough to look at the what is missing. Um, to look at the system that we now live in that uh, prevents people from uh, improving their lives. And that it, it, it's, it, I mentioned the um, UK, there's a group of researchers that um, are building, strengthening uh, the arguments for banks themselves to identify how they, uh, when they look into exclusively the for-profit motive without uh, educating their uh, recipients of loans toward the consequences. We certainly noticed that in 2007 when so many people lost their homes in the United States. <laughs> that a lot of that could have been prevented had there been different policies with regard to lending. And so this, this for-profit motive is, is uh, very much uh, being addressed within this goal. So I, with Darcy's amazingly potent meditation, what came to my mind is holding in intention those who do not recognize the great service they are giving uh, as the new as part of the new group of world service there are there are tens hundreds maybe even millions of people on the initiative path that do not realize the the valuable uh, contribution that they're making to open the information and challenge the assumptions from which it's based. So while things in many ways seem so chaotic and so dangerous, I, I was deeply moved to keep in mind in gratitude those we, individuals we will never know who um, are beside, uh, behind the scenes really influencing, shifting in our policies and eventually it will flow into the educational system that will change our priorities. So um, this is a goal that reaches deep into the shadow side of human living that came about mostly rather innocently after World War II and now 
uh, uh, redress seems to be happening. And I want to just say, I, I think a lot of the um, power of the goals was generated in the 80s when the term culture of peace was recognized. Um, it was it is a term that began in civil society, as we know, when it was recognized by UNESCO as something that we needed to begin to wrap our heads around. So for me, the SDGs are, I think Dot Maver said it, that are the blueprint for how we are to achieve this, uh, this piece. Uh, so thank you for speaking from Oregon, from Portland, from the city. Uh, it's, uh, Katya, again, you know, when uh, when this was a really amazing meditation, and from the depth and power of that comes um, this understanding that we are truly to support the shift in paradigm, um, you know, uh, even and on was speaking to that before and Martha, and uh, because from culture of war to culture of peace, it's an enormous shift. And um, this is a very new culture, but it does support the right human relationship at its core. In understanding that each has a voice and each has a vision, and that is to be accepted as valuable and valid. And the decision will come from the medium balancing point of inclusion of all of that. It's something that I think is first of all asked of us, of people who are following the esoteric path, towards ourselves, towards one another, towards the groups that we're working with, and towards the group that groups that we support. And um, I think UN, in, again, in essence, has this capacity built in to the structure. It's just um, the living essence will make you know its way <laughs> slowly but surely. A wish would be faster, but the it's a huge change. And again, we are in the presence of the energy that gives the vision to that power of change. And um, so to speak, the fiery power, because the uh, Sagittarius is the element of fire. And it has the capacity of burning down, burn down the dross and uh, creating a new, this power of renewal and really true shift. So we are in a good place um, with that meditation and with that goal. Thank you. It's Richard here from Australia. Thank you so much for a wonderful, stimulating conversation and meditation. I've got many thoughts and I'll try and put together just a few of those threads. Um, when I think of inequality, I feel what we're looking at is an imbalance, often an uh, imbalance of power. Um, and so those images of the Sagittarian arrow that pierce through and pierce through to the center, to me, um, are very powerful. And when we talk about um, the point of light, the point of love, um, the center, um, I think we contact the energies of balance and therefore that's everything we're talking about. 
And what I find very inspiring of being uh, very privileged to be intensely involved with restorative practices for the last number of years, 16 years or so, that has um, brought me into many places in our society, into homes um, of whole stratas of our community, from the rich to the poor, to the so-called powerful, to the dispossessed. Uh, and into institutions. And what I see and feel time and time again when I step into somebody's life and story for that moment is I see in their center just wonderful goodness, um, often speaking different languages and having different narratives, but there's something in common and it is that point of light that we all hold. And I think when we remember this within ourselves and as we engage with others that ignites that inner light for them and they feel empowered they contact their center and they find their voice and i think this is very empowering i think it's very much to do with our work that runs through all things that we talk about here uh, in these new moon gatherings and I feel that the work that we do subjectively and the conversations that we have stimulates this for the whole community. Um, and so I find that very um, enlightening and very inspiring and I think very um, timely for this Sagittarian energies that we are talking about. And so, Thank you. Um, I'm not sure if I was particularly coherent because I'm still in a bit of meditation myself, but um, yeah, thank you. Hello, this is Martha again. Thank you, Richard, for um, holding up that that light of hope with so many people around doing good things. Um, I wanted also to mention, and I'm going back to this very potent meditation on the cycle of conferences, just as the Marrakesh conference is coming up, some of us know that that in Katowice, did I say it correctly? Katya, I'm not sure. Um, Poland, there's a uh, the kind the COP conference 24, the uh, climate uh, change, uh, preparing for the uh, Paris Treaty Agreement to be officially um, recognized, is taking place, and the um, interrelationship between environment, economics, and people is intensifying to a quantum degree. There was just, the, the elements were always there in the uh, addressing climate change, but they seem to be somewhat separate threads. And now um, we have available to us, we can, some of us can actually participate in some of the conferences going on if we're willing to get up early in the morning um, to to um, um, appreciate that while governments are establishing the rhetoric and um, creating the frameworks out of which laws will follow it's really the ground that has spawned the determination, the determined expression for um, a new value of life, uh, of earth, of people, and that when the balance, that point of balance that you raised, uh, Richard, is, is truly an occult 
saying that you know we we are advised to stay in the middle go to the middle when it comes to the vertical and the horizontal bars you know aim for the middle because that's truly where the tension is and uh thank you for opening with that very uh, powerful insight about a point of balance and again thank you darcy for this amazing meditation May I share briefly? Please. Externalization of the hierarchy. Uh, 377 DK says, how can we simply and clearly express the goal of this hope for a new world order? And word briefly, the objective which each person and nation should hold before itself when the opportunity faces each and all. It is surely that every nation, great and small, with the minorities given equal and proportionate rights, should pursue its own individual culture and work out its own salvation as seems best to it, but that each and all should develop the realization that they are organic parts of one corporate whole and that they must contribute to that whole all that they have and are. This concept is already present in the hearts of countless thousands and carries with it great responsibility. These realizations, when intelligently developed and wisely handled, will lead to right human relations economic stability based on the spirit of sharing and to a fresh orientation of man to man, of nation to nation, and of all to that supreme power to which we give the name God. I believe we can say that that very thing is being achieved today and that the necessary steps of bringing and phasing out the old order, keeping the good that is necessary to build upon the foundation of the new is taking place. And to hold that vision with a strength and a fiery heart of magnetic potentiality that we are doing and being that goal today and now throughout the world and that thousands that were spoken of here by DK shortly after World War II has multiplied and that the strength is there and we continue to move forward with one heart and one mind and one world. Thanks to everyone for being part of our circle today. Now, as the time of our gathering comes to the end, I would like to introduce the beginning of the next cycle for our work as 
Rebecca mentioned uh, earlier. As we end one cycle, we start looking towards the next cycle and start meditating on the next goal that will be in our focus. And starting with this new moon, we will be focusing on goal eight. Decent work and economic growth. So we invite those of you who are interested to join this um, group work every day just bring your focus to this goal maybe read maybe research or just meditatively tune with the meaning the inner essence of that goal it can be something very short few seconds a minute or half an hour whatever you can devote to that and a triangle the next focalizing triangle who will be working with this uh, goal preparing for the next new moon in Capricorn who will be doing daily as well so you can join to uh, the focalizing triangle for this goal and maybe Rebecca you can remind me who will be that focalizing triangle for the next goal and then that during the full moon time we could meditate using the energy of the full moon and as we approach the Capricorn new moon we will start grounding those energies and distributing them to the world. And the next month on uh, January 6th, we will come together again at the webinar and we'll meditate and anchor those energies that we will accumulate during this month and distribute them into the world. Thank you, Alexander. Um, next month, Martha is with us again and um, Frida Kemp um, is going to work in the Focalising Triangle and we are looking for a third person. So please feel welcome to get in touch if you feel to um, support the Focalising in the next month's webinar. Um, Thank you. And also, um, I'm showing on the screen uh, our coming webinars. So I will use this uh, opportunity to invite you to our coming Solstice and Capricorn Solar Festival webinar on December 21st. Uh, we will be focusing on the seed group of religious workers. We will use the energy of Capricorn to align with that important group. And our um, presenters will be Lena Beck, Hughes and Sheldon Hughes and uh, on December 31st we invite you to join the New Year vigil organized by the Moria Federation and uh, this will be the sixth annual webinar focalized from Jerusalem so the Hekal group from Jerusalem will bring our focus to the opportunity of Capricorn and their presentation will be embedded into the this new year vigil organized by Moria Federation. Uh, more information will be coming on that from uh, Michael and Tuya Robbins and we will forward that information as well. And as I already mentioned on January 6th, Capricorn New Moon focusing on goal eight decent work and economic growth. Rebecca, did you want to mention something else? Did we miss anything uh, to announce? You are perfect. <laughs> I don't think there's anything else except that I'd like to pass over to Dot again um, to draw our energy together as we close the webinar. Mm. Thank you, Rebecca. Thank you, Alexander. Thank you, Darcy, Katya, Martha, and all the participants and the many voices as we have shared today and as we distribute energy and now close, seal our time together uh, with a, a mantra after one minute of silence. 
and Alexander, if we can put that slide on, thank you. And then we will close with one ohm. So we'll take one minute of silence, sound the mantra, and close with an ohm. May the spirit of peace be spread abroad in our hearts, through our groups, and throughout the world. Oh.